shoes and a friend dropped by to see me she said you're some cleaning whiz you look so happy and you dress so snappy come on tell me what your secret is i said i'm a fly baby flapping these pretty wings i'm a fly baby chorus anyway welcome it's today is a uh, plan and play day but some of you are new here and I I just want to reinforce the fact that we're gonna have some fun that we're going to get things done our motto this year is excuses be gone be gone excuses be gone Let's have some fun to get things done in 2021. No more excuses. No more whining that you don't have time. But we're here to help you. I know we've all been through a bad year. You know? In relative speaking, we're still here. <laughs> and that's all that matters. We're still here. Things may have changed a little bit, but we got to get back to basics. And with Fly Lady, we're going we're gonna to hold your hand all along the way. We're going to hold your hand. So get, if you're new here, people, people ask, you know, where do I start? Well, the first thing you're to do is to get dressed to lace up shoes. Yeah. Get dressed to lace up shoes. And while you're listening to this getting started message, I want you to go get dressed to lace up shoes. Unless it's way in the wee hours of the morning like it is. In Australia, it's the wee hours of the morning. You, you need to be in the bed watching this and then get ready to close your eyes and go to sleep. But the main thing here is we're going to help you to let go of those excuses. And those excuses come from your perfectionism. And to take a few minutes, two minutes, it's all it takes sometimes, just two minutes to get some things done. So get dressed to lace up shoes is the first thing you got to do. Even if you have to pick dirty clothes out of the dirty clothes hamper. Yeah, I know who you are because you don't have any clean clothes in the house. 
put on something that's not quite as fresh as it needs to be. You can always throw it in the dryer and run it for like a five minutes and it'll get freshened up. But put on your lace-up shoes, fix your hair. You always feel better when your hair is not looking nasty. Fix your hair, put on some lipstick. Sometimes that's all you need, lipstick and earrings. You know, put on lipstick and earrings. I always have to have my necklace on. Necklace on, my watch, and I'm good to go. Yeah, dirty clothes. We're going to get dressed because you're going to do a load of laundry today and you're going to put a couple of outfits in the wash machine so you'll have some clean ones tomorrow. But I know you. I know what's hiding under your sink. I know you've got vases and mayonnaise jars and all kinds of good stuff. Lots of cleaning products. Oh my goodness. You have more cleaning products than Carter's got little liver pills. But you got them. And we're going to get some things done today. We are. Because I'm going to teach you how to get started. Now, the first thing we tell you to do is to go shine your sink. And people say, why do I have to do that? This whining has got to stop, y'all. Why do I have to do that? Well, it's where I started. It's real simple. It's where I started. And, and uh, it, it was just a simple thing my husband asked me to do. When we first got married, he said, honey, if you'll just keep one side of the sink empty, I'll make you coffee. And you know, for 24 years, he's made me coffee <laughs> every morning. Spoils me rotten. But my sink is shining because it's empty. I go to bed with it shining. My grandmother always took her dirty dish towel, the one she used to dry dishes because she never had a dishwasher. And she would dry her dishes and then she would dry her sink out because she didn't want any, any spots in her sink. She didn't. She didn't want spots in her sink. So she had this wonderful, wonderful habit of shining her sink every night when she turned off the kitchen light. And turn off that kitchen light and knowing your kitchen is clean, that is just... An amazing feeling. An amazing feeling. So, go shine your sink. Let me tell you how to do that. Get some baking soda. Barkeeper's friend. Comment. I don't care what you use cleanser-wise. Even if it's just a 3M scrubber. And just buff your sink really well. Now, if it's really nasty, you might have to take the edge of a knife and scrape around the edges of your, of your sink because you could have built up residue of some kind. If, you, if you're on a city system, a city sewer system, and you don't have to worry about messing with your septic tank bacteria that makes everything go away, you could add, you know, rinse your sink really well after you've used Comet. And then you could put, fill it full of hot water and, and put, you know, half a cup of bleach in there. Let it sit for 30 minutes. And then rinse it down. And there you have it. Your sink is going to be shining. Now, rinse it really well. And you could take, now, this is going to sound weird. But if you go out in the garage and find some car wax, just a little bit of car wax, you can wax your sink and and stuff won't stain it as much. Yeah, it'll work. It'll work. So taking care of that sink and making it clean. I spent two hours when I first started making, making that sink. It was a 25 year, 24, 25 year old sink. And Robert had built the house in the mid 70s and it had never been changed. I have a new sink now. And it's quite a blessing to me. And I love my sink. And I keep it shiny every night. The secret, this, this is going to make you smile. Because when you get up in the morning, you walk into your kitchen, and you see that beautiful sink to start your day, you are going to love it. You're going to be energized. That smile is going to come across your face. Even if there's just a few dishes in there. Because your dishwasher becomes your dirty dish disposal unit, y'all. 
your dishwasher becomes the place you put your dirty dishes. And if it's full of clean dishes, you know the kids aren't going to empty it. So you need to, as soon as the dishwasher runs and gets finished, you need to put those dishes away, right away. And then the dishwasher is ready to receive those dirty dishes from those precious children that are going to learn how to put the dishes in the dishwasher. But if you wake up to, you know, a couple of glasses and a, a plate in your sink, it's still not bad. It's not bad at all because your kids learn to put them in the sink. So that's a blessing to you. That is really a blessing. So getting up in the morning, being greeted with this beautiful kitchen, countertops cleaned off, stove clean, floor been swept, all of this makes you smile. And guess what? That smile tells your head that you're happy. And you know what happy does? Happy fills your body with good endorphins. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it's amazing. Now, I like to put on a little fun music to go with it, and that's why we have our own little fun music. But those of you who are just getting started, you may want to grab this book. It's, it's on Amazon. It's on our website, flylady.net. If you're brand new to us, sign up for our emails. Yeah, go to flylady.net. There's a join button in the top left-hand corner. And get our emails because these emails, as much as they may make you mad, they're in your head. They start to sink in right here. And those messages sinking in help you to stay immersed in the Fly Lady system. There's a method to my madness, I promise. This is my first book. It used to be hot pink, but the publisher didn't like that color. I kind of like hot pink, y'all. I have on hot pink. This is Sync Reflections. It's my very first book. This is the Bible of Fly Lady. It tells you everything about what we do. But I'm going to explain it to you right now. We have, our system is based upon a morning routine, an afternoon routine, and a before bed routine. These three routines keep our home running on automatic pilot. Now you say, how could that be? Houses don't clean themselves. No, but you get up in the morning and when you start establishing the simple habits that we're going to walk you through in a year's time, you're going to be blown away at how much, autom how much of your house cleaning is automatic inside of you. So let's try it. Let's, let's think about this for a second. When you wake up in the morning, well, the first thing I do is I'm laying in bed. So I try to remember my dreams. This is fun. Try to remember, I go, sort of go through what I woke up dreaming about. And then I pull my covers up to my chinny chin chin and I slide out the side. My bed's practically made up before I get out of the bed because it has to be. Because I have to go to the bathroom right quick. Especially if I haven't gotten up in the middle of the night, which is really good. I go to the bathroom. And I get dressed. My, I have laid my clothes out the night before. And I, my shoes are there. My necklace is there. My earrings are there. My glasses are all there. Everything is right there for me to get ready in the morning and it takes me about 10 minutes if that wow I'm dressed and while I'm in the bathroom I do something we call swish and swipe I take my purple rag I wipe down my mirror because I'm a good girl I floss every night Looking at myself in the mirror, and you know those dental floss home runs can really fly high. And so I wipe down my mirror. I put my makeup and stuff away. I don't have much. I have lipstick and a little, con little dry concealer, a little powder. 
It's about all I use anymore. And I put everything away that I've gotten out. I, I take my morning meds because they're sitting right there. I check my calendar because it's right there. And I'm ready to start my day. I grab a load of laundry, head to the washing machine because it's in the basement. And it's a small load. It doesn't have to be a big load. It's a small load of laundry. And I get the washing machine booted up, ready to go. Then I go to the kitchen. And if the dishwasher needs emptying, I empty the dishwasher. If it doesn't, I don't eat in the morning. And I'll, I'll, I fast all morning long and I don't eat until about one or two in the afternoon because um, I just get more stuff done. I'm, I'm energized when my body is not having to digest food. And so fasting is, I've learned about fasting and that's the one thing in mine and Leanne's book, The Body Clutter, that we didn't include in this book, but intermittent fasting is good. So I've written four books You've seen three of them so far. And this is my last book. And it was kind of written for my millennials. People that have uh, like to read little, little bits of things. You can open this book anywhere and get something good out of it. And it was a fun book to write because I wrote it in baby steps. I really did. So that's kind of your morning routine routine you don't want to make it so big that you can't get things done because you're just overwhelmed but it's one step after another it's the dance to your day and while while the coffee's brewing i've grabbed my mop or my feather duster and i'm running around the house for the two or three minutes that it takes for the coffee to brew and you never have to see dirt again y'all you never have to see dirt again because you're going to stay on top of it. You're going to stay right on top of it. So my afternoon routine, afternoon routine, I try to make any phone calls early in the afternoon. I've got 11 o'clock appointment with you every day, except for Sundays. And I have videos to get posted on all a different on different platforms everywhere. I have all this stuff that that I do to take care of you, to help you to find us. Cuz we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on brighteon.com, Bright .com, we're on Podbeam, we're on Apple Podcast. But the videos are on the other platforms. Apple doesn't allow um, video podcasts. Or if they have, I haven't seen it yet. We're on Locals. We're on BitChute. So we're everywhere. <laughs> and it just keeps it, it, keeps it simple, y'all. It keeps it simple. And I get those things done. I'm working on tomorrow's messages that are going to go out in email. And every afternoon at 5.30, you get a flight plan for tomorrow, 5.30 Eastern time. You get a flight plan for tomorrow. And it tells, it tells you what, what we're doing. So today is plan and play day. Tuesday is always plan and play day. So with, with the Fly Lady system, then it rolls down, you know, get something started for dinner as part of your before. Morning routine, afternoon routine, you know, make sure it's everything's going like it needs to go. You know, you can do all your chopping and everything in the morning. You can put it in your Instapot in the after, afternoon late, and in no time you got a meal. So you're baby stepping your way to feeding your family. You're baby stepping your way to taking care of you. And then here's the, here's the key to keeping your kitchen clean, and that's sink shining. Always, when you're in the kitchen, start with a sink full of hot, soapy water. That is, is a way to clean as you go. Clean as you go. And your kitchen is going to look good. Always start with an empty dishwasher. Even if you're just going in there to bake cookies with the kids, 
always have an empty dishwasher first because everything goes in the dish. You're cleaning as you go. That keeps you from having a major explosion in your kitchen because you're in a hurry. That's where the explosions happen. You cook on high and you're in a hurry. Don't do it. Yesterday, I cooked hamburger meat and Italian sausage together and made this beautiful mixture with onions and lots of herbs and spices and garlic. The house was smelling like some fancy restaurant somewhere. Robert said, what is that aroma? He loved it. And I made, um, I made a pasta sauce last night that I never made before. It was kind of like a vodka sauce, but it didn't have vodka in it. <laughs> and he loved it. So nothing says I love you like dinner cooking. And I cooked on low all day long in my iron skillet. And I was so happy because it made him happy. Blessing others. That clean kitchen can do that. So get dinner started. And then while you're cooking, have your sink full of hot soapy water. Don't drop knives down into that hot soapy water. Leave them beside the sink and you can wash them as you need them and then put the trash away as you make the trash I keep a zip a, an old Ziploc bag handy to put onion skins and all kinds onion peels potatoes all kinds of different things in that bag and then I zip it up and I throw it away yeah I don't like wet trash at all in my trash can Nope. So when it comes time to clean up from dinner, all you really got to do is put your plates in, in the dishwasher. And your kitchen is clean because you've cleaned as you've gone. You've cleaned as you cooked. There's nothing better than that. And then you can start your before bed routine right after dinner. Kids need baths. You need a shower. You may have to stage it different ways. Some people like to take their shower in the morning. I don't. I want to use my bath time as my prayer time and my uh, relaxation time. That's what I want to do, y'all. That's what I want to do. And I pick my clothes out. But I kind of pick my clothes out as I've done the laundry. I put the outfits together and they're just kind of stacked. I, I file them in a, a Rubbermaid bin that's a drawer in my bathroom. So my clothes are actually in my bathroom. And I pick out a pair of slacks and a, a shirt and I try to mix the colors up as much as possible. If I can remember what I wore yesterday, sometimes I have to look in the dirty clothes. And I've got my clothes picked out. I look at my calendar to see what's on for tomorrow. If, you know, if I have to doctor's appointment, which I'm not having any doctor's appointments right now because I haven't been sick in almost two years. And I've been staying safe from this COVID mess. <clears throat> and, but check your appointments. See what you got. If you got, have you got an interview? Sometimes I have interviews to do. I check my calendar. If you're going to be out and about, you need to check your weather too. And if you've got an early morning appointment, you may have to take a dry erase marker and write on your bathroom mirror to remind you that you have an appointment in the morning because Swish and Swipe is going to take it right off. So you've got your morning, your afternoon, and your before bed routine. And then your before bed routine should include this one thing. Go to bed at a decent hour. I was in bed by midnight last night, y'all. I looked at Robert. No, that was night before last. I looked at Robert and I said, the pod people have not invaded, I promise, honey. He said, who are you <laughs> coming to bed at midnight? But, you know, midnight's a good time for me. Good time. Okay, so. I have a little routine for my face. I have eye saline that I put in because my eyes get stressed. I spend 15 hours on the computer intermittent you know I'm up and doing things all during the day uh, I have uh, earplugs I have to put in I have some nose spray I have to do because I like to keep my sinuses moist 
and I have um, chapstick to put on. Take my earrings off. I take my um, I take my watch off and put it on the charge. That charger is in the bathroom. I can actually see the time when I get up in the morning or get up in the middle of the night because it wiggles for some reason. And I walk in the room and it knows I'm there. <clears throat> so that that's our daily stuff. And you can put it on post-it notes. You can put it in a simple control journal. I don't have one up here. But just a little photo album with um, four by six, no cards in it. Morning routine, afternoon routine, before bed routine. I had post-it notes on my bathroom mirror for years. And it worked. It worked. Anyway, that's our, our daily routines. Now, the other part of our system that works is we have a basic weekly plan. So here it is. Got your pen and paper? Get it right quick. Monday, we bless our homes. Weekly home blessing. We do it on the show. We do two-minute blessing, blessings on the show instead of five minutes or ten minutes. We do two minutes. But guess what? You can get some, a bunch of stuff done. You can get a whole lot of stuff done in two minutes. You just don't realize how much you can get done until you try it. So we do weekly home blessing on Mondays. Sometimes we do it again on Fridays because you're getting... You're recovering from the weekend and then you're preparing for the weekend. And sometimes we do that on the show on Fridays. We have um, Tuesday is plan and play day. Today is the day you, you check your inventory of your food that you need to cook because it's been in the refrigerator for a week. And then go um, start making your menus for the rest of this week if you didn't do it last week. For the rest of this week and next week. And here is the key to menu planning. It's a calendar. It's a calendar with plenty of space. Let me get March up here. Plenty of space, y'all. Plenty of space. Write your menu plan down. It's it's simple. You have like maybe Mexican Monday and something else on Tuesday. Wednesday is um, surprise chicken with cleaning out your refrigerator. So we have a day for everything. Tuesday is our plan and play day. And then we do something fun to reward ourselves for making those menus. So we have we know what food we're going to cook. Now, during the, the pandemic, I've been getting um, food... Uh, Meats and things from Butcher Box and Moink. Well, I haven't gotten Butcher Box. Leanne gets Butcher Box, but I gave Butcher Box as a gift for someone this at Christmas, and they love it. They love it. And I also do Misfits Market, which is vegetables. We need our fresh veggies. No more pizza three times a week. We, if we have the food in our house, we can cook and we can plan menus around that. And if you never have done an inventory of all the food in your freezer, you'd be surprised at how many meals you, you can plan out of just what's in your freezer. My little friend Joy did that a few weeks ago. Money was tight with COVID and stuff, and her out, her hours hadn't been cut, but her pay was cut. And so she's had to make do, and she's had to go to, to um, <clears throat> places that give food away, and she's had to plan menus around that. So folks, plan menus around what you've got in your freezer. She took inventory of her freezer, and she came up with 13 or 14 meals she could cook out of that freezer. Imagine that. You've probably got that too. That's money you can save by not, not 
just going to the store because every time you walk in the store, you're going to spend $50. But if you don't have to go to the store, you're good. You're good. So plan your menus around that. It's a good thing. That's what Tuesday does. Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day. Do you want to know why you procrastinate? You procrastinate because of your perfectionism. You tell yourself you don't have time to do it right now, but you don't finish the sentence. You don't have time to do it like your mama did it, or you don't have time to get it right. You don't have eight hours. Well, you think it's going to take eight hours when you can spend two minutes. So anytime you hear yourself say, I don't have time, set your timer. Two minutes. You can do anything for 15 minutes, but you can really do anything for two minutes. So if your child comes up to you and you hear these words come out of your mouth and they say, Mommy, will you read me a Dr. Seuss book? <laughs> yeah, you knew I'd go there. You sit down. And, and you hear yourself say, honey, I don't have time right now. You need to sit down with that Dr. Seuss book and read that book to your baby. It won't take long. And you will enjoy it and they will enjoy it. So whenever those words cross your lips or come across your mind, you need to do exactly what you said you didn't have time for. You got that? That's your cue to do what you said you didn't have time to do because your perfectionism, which perfectionism is from the devil, is to keep you separated from your family. It really is. It's to make things crazy in your house. It's, you've been there. You're trying to get out of the crazy right now. You're really trying to get uncrazed. We're trying to do things in a systematic order that is going to make you happy. You can be happy. You really can. These routines do this. So Wednesday's always anti-procrastination. What's the one thing you procrastinate about? Cleaning out your refrigerator. So clean out your refrigerator, folks. Do it. And then when you've got your grocery list and payday rolls around and you can go buy groceries, then you are good to go. Your, your refrigerator is ready to receive those groceries. Your freezer is ready. Right now, I need to reorganize my freezer upstairs. And Robert's been taking some things downstairs, and I'm going to get a bin for just burger meat and meatloaf and stuff and a bin for chicken and a bin for vegetables. I have side by side. So that's on my list to do today, to take inventory of my freezer. Thursday is our errand day. If you've got some errands to run, don't wait till the weekend. Run them on your way home from work or let the kids stay with their dad for a little while and go run an errand. You know, what is that errand? Do you need to go to the drugstore? Go do it. Get it done. And then it's going to save your weekends for fun. Friday is always our day to clean out our car, clean out our purse, and plan something for date night and do it. You know, date night can be as simple as sitting on the back porch watching the sun go down, especially if it's getting warmer in your area. Date night can be movie night. Pick a movie out. We watched a dud of a movie last night. I mean, it was a dud. I told Robert he didn't get any points for that movie. None. The night before last, we watched a good movie. I picked it out. <laughs> but get a playlist going of fun movies to watch. Maybe one's a chick flick one week and one's a, a, a one of those car crash movies, uh, the, the racing movies or some fun that you don't particularly like, but your husband might. And... It makes date night special. Saturday is always family fun day. Family fun day. Plan something. Get out in the world. Go for a hike. Right now, today, um, my daughter-in-law got her little niece. Her little niece, Sophie, is staying the, the week with her. A week. 
she doesn't get to stay by herself much with her Aunt Emily. But they went to Memphis and picked her up and brought her back home. And <clears throat> they're going on a hike today. They're planning this hike already. Just to get out into the world and have some fun in a sunbeam. Plan something on Saturday. Plan something on Saturday to do with your family. Get out into the world. You can be safe and be out in the world. You can. And then Sunday is Renew Your Spirit Day. You know, I like to study the Bible. I like to look at, at my favorite preachers on Sunday. I take my time and I get deep into something. A few weeks ago, I studied about um, the... The Lewis Isle Revival. If you've never studied that, look it up on YouTube. There's a, an account of it from a pastor that was recorded, that was there. And it, I mentioned it to my niece, Brooke, yesterday. It's amazing. The whole, two little old ladies in, an, in their 80s, and one of them was blind, got 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 down on their knees and prayed for a revival for the young people of their island in Scotland. It's, it's just a beautiful encounter. I had cold chills the whole time listening to this hour sermon. So Sunday is renew our spirit. Take time for you. Recharge your, your personal batteries so that you're ready for the next week. So that's our basic weekly plan. Now, here's the big thing to fly, lady. Big thing. We have to declutter every single day. And sometimes it's five minutes in the morning. Sometimes it's five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes in the evening. We have lots of fun ways to declutter. 27 fling boogies, five minute room rescues, run around the house with a garbage bag and start throwing things away. But you got to declutter something every day, every single day. Because clutter has built up in our house. It becomes this cocoon that keeps us caged. And we need to break out of that cocoon. And to do that, we have to get things out of the house. You can, if you learn nothing else from this video, it's this little saying. You can't organize clutter. You have to get rid of it. Say it again. You can't organize clutter. You have to get rid of it. And it has to go out the door. That's why having your shoes on your feet gets it out to the car. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. When you start getting rid of the clutter, your house is going to feel bigger. It's going to be easier to keep clean because you're not going to have as much stuff to mess with. If the kids' toys are decluttered, you're going to have more room for them to play. And that's a, that's a testimony I want to tell you about it. Tea time. Room to dance. Writing that down so I can remember it today. Room to dance. So folks, that's our basic weekly plan. Now, each week... For if you look at a, a calendar, let me pull up a calendar, August. <clears throat> so we have one, two, three, four, five weeks that go across the month. Five of them. This week, we are in zone two. This week was zone one. And a little bit, we... When the month falls at the first of the week, it's kind of weird. But zone two is a full week. Zone three is a full week. Zone four is a full week. And zone five is a few days. And then we have the rest of the week is zone one. Zone one. Got your pencil and paper? Get it out. Be ready to take notes if you like to take notes. I don't. But <clears throat> let's take some notes. Zone one. Is your front porch. It's what people see when they walk up to your house. Your front porch. 
your dining room, and the entrance of your home. Three little areas. Front porch, entrance, and dining room. Bam! Zone one. Zone two is always your kitchen. That means we declutter, we reorganize drawers, we get rid of cookbooks we haven't used in a long time because we can get all the recipes we want online. I keep my main cookbooks. I have some some focus cookbooks. Just keep your favorite ones. And one time I almost decluttered Robert's favorite one. Oh my, that was that would not have been good. His cookie cookbook, but that's another story. I'll have to I'll have to put this down on the list. Cookie cookbook. <clears throat> I'm coming up with lots of tea time things. Zone three is your main bathroom. And people say, well, I got more rooms than that in the house. Well, you've all got a main bathroom that company would use. You also got your bathroom and your master bedroom that nobody sees because it's nasty. So zone three is your main bathroom. And we pick another room that week, uh, either a child's room a laundry room, your craft room, which is a total disaster, your basement. We just pick another room or you can pick another room to do some simple things like decluttering and clearing out some stuff. Zone four is your master bedroom. Yeah, the bedroom you sleep in, that's the master bedroom. I don't care which room it is, but it's your room. Because it's the worst room in the house. So we we do some detailed cleaning in there, like cleaning some window sills, getting some cobwebs, doing some things in there that you don't do every day. You make your bed every day. You can do your floors every day, but you don't clean out the window sills. And mine have gotten pretty bad this winter. So I'm going to be cleaning out window sills in a couple of weeks. But I'm not pushing myself to do it all at once. I'm taking my time, taking this baby steps, working my way through the zones. Zone, zone four is your master bedroom, your master bedroom closet. Yeah, your walk-in closet, which is a total disaster. And your master bedroom bathroom, which nobody can get in. And you lock the door behind you if you've got company. Zone five, that's your living room. And usually zone five and zone one occur in the same week. You got it? Zone five and zone one, same week. And that's your zones. Now, we don't try to do our whole detailed cleaning list all, all week long. We just do five-minute missions. And I'll give them to you in the flight plan every day for what to do. And I'll give you a kid mission in the flight plan. plan. If you've got children, because they 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 need to learn responsibility for their own rooms, and every at the first of every month you need to declutter toys, and rotate them in and out because toys become a major a major source of problems in your home. Toys, papers, and toys, papers, and dirty clothes. That is. The problem areas. Now, each month, we've done zones. Now, each month, we practice a new habit. Psychologists tell us it takes 21 days to create a new habit, to establish this habit. Oh, my goodness. They are so wrong. They're wrong. Because if you're a perfectionist, if you miss a day, you throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, fly lady's not for me. No, she's not for me. But if you have a little grace in your life, because you know the good Lord has some grace. If you have a little grace for yourself, then if you miss a day, you just jump back in like you never missed a day. Quit beating yourself up because we are our own worst enemy. Our own worst enemy. So... January, we practice shining our sinks, and we all need a refresher course on that from time to time. You can start it right now. February, 
is decluttering 15 minutes every day. That's all you got to do. 15 minutes every day. Five in the morning, five in the afternoon, five in the evening. Bam. And sometimes it's in your closet. You're going to declutter five items. Keep it simple. We don't do the Marie stuff because you don't pull everything out of your closet and try to try it all on. That's just crazy. You know what fits you and what doesn't. Yeah, I said it. That woman is not for my fly babies because she makes them nuts. They already have a hard time. And then to have them pull everything out of their closet and their bedroom floor, this just isn't right. Now, March is getting dressed to lace up shoes. You got it? Getting dressed to lace up shoes. Every day. First thing in the morning. Don't wait till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Do it when you first get up. It's amazing what you can get done when you're dressed to lace up shoes. You don't mind taking the trash out. Don't do it in your robe. Get dressed to lace up shoes every single... Be ready for somebody to come to your door. April is making our bed every day. Now, that's what our, our habit is going to be next month, is we're going to practice making our bed every day. And you're going to make your bed and you're not even going to know you've made it. I've already mentioned this once in this video. Pull your covers up to your chinny chin chin and slide out the side and your bed's practically made before you even get out of it. If you're not rushing around in a hurry when you first wake up and you're you overslept, bam, your bed's made. May is moving for 15 minutes. I mean, moving your body, taking a walk down your driveway. One lady told me the other day, yesterday, Conda, she says, I'm going to walk down, down to this. She has this window that she puts history stuff in. And she says, it's six minutes from my house. I'm going to walk down there. I'm going to rearrange the window, even if I just clean the window on the storefront and make it pretty. And then I'll walk back. 15 minutes of moving every day. Getting in the habit of getting up and moving. My watch tells me how much I'm moving. If I set my timer every 15 minutes to get up and do something in the house, I have have completed my circles by 6 o'clock at night if I do that. Yes, everybody loves Conda. I love Conda. She's precious. <laughs> she is so precious. Conda is, is a fly lady. She works for my nephew, Alexander, and she mentors people who need a little hand-holding on flyladypremium.com. He also has built an app called Fly Lady Plus, and we have the Messenger app which is for people who don't want to get emails. Go figure. But you have to pay for it. Yeah, it's something I spend, I spend a lot of time every day working on that. <clears throat> so, here we go. May is moving 15 minutes every day. June is drinking your water. Our water bottle sale is ending on March the 17th. So get it now. It's $14.95. Keeps your water cold. It keeps your tea hot. But be careful. Pour your tea into a cup instead of drinking it out of the bottle. June, July is Swish and Swipe. We have our Swish and Swipe pack. Let me get it right here. Well, this is our Swisher and Vase pack that's on sale right now for $10.95. You need one of these in every bathroom of your home. And soap is soap, so I pour old shampoos or Dawn dishwashing liquid in my vase. Yep, that's what I do. The Swish and Swipe pack has purple rags with it. Right now, all our purple rags are on <clears throat> a BOGO, except for the pink ones. They went off a month ago. So you see those habits for each month. August, our habit is doing a load of laundry every day. You can start that right now. 
doing a load of laundry every day. A, a load of laundry each day keeps Mount Washmore at bay. I like my little, little cliches, y'all. You do a load of laundry, you never have to see the piles of dirty laundry again. But don't get obsessive and be taking clothes off of kids before they're finished playing, you know? August, September. <clears throat> September's habit. Uh, what is September's habit? Okay, somebody. August is, oh, September's habit is our before bed routine. It's practicing our before bed routine. Now, just write down three things you need to do. Check your calendar. Check the weather. Brush your teeth. That's three things. And then you add, the, add to them as you get them. I have a little habit that I do for my before bed routine. Before I start walking to the, bat, to the bedroom, I go eyes, ears, nose, mouth. Did I get those things done? That mouth is nighttime medications, supplements. I don't really take a lot of medication. But yeah, there you go. Bam. Before bed routine. Practice for a whole month of September. That's to get ready for going to school. Because we set up our launch pad. We do lots of things as part of our before bed routine. Get ready for the next day. That's what the routine is. It's the most important routine of the whole day. October, October is our paper clutter. We have paper everywhere, everywhere. So let's clear out our paper clutter. Let's get the things done that we need to do to clear off those hot spots. Because every hot spot it has paper growing like rabbits, y'all. Rabbits. So let's get rid of the rabbits. Let's clear it off. Put something beautiful on your hotspot. Or put a sign that says, put it away. Don't put it here. The reason you hold on to your paper clutter, you want to know the key to getting rid of your paper clutter is a fireplace. A fireplace or a fire pit. And it's getting to be pretty weather outside now. We're kind of dry right here right now, so we wouldn't be burning anything outside in a fire pit because we have one over on the ridge, but we can burn things in the fireplace. That's where you get rid of that paper clutter or get somebody to buy you or you go buy yourself an industrial shredder. They run around a hundred bucks. Yep. Go get a shredder and just start shredding the papers because most of them are trash. 95% of it is trash and you're holding on to it because you don't know what's in the pile. So start going through it six inches at a time, clearing off one hot spot at a time, dealing with one room at a hot at a time because each room has several hot spots in it. So one flat surface, you know, we all need architects desks that are at a 45 degree angle. Some people love their shredders. Yes, they do. <clears throat> so, we're dealing with paper clutter in October. November, menu planning. Take inventory of what's in your freezer. Eat out of your freezer as much as you can in, in November. So save money so that Christmas isn't going to cost you a fortune and you're not going to jack up your credit cards. Eat out of your freezer. Do it. And then December, December is pampering yourself, pampering yourself every day, doing something. It's my gift to you. You know, do your fingernails. Do, do the hand thing that Mary Kay taught us was scrub your hand with Epsom salt or some kind of facial scrub on your hands and then lather them down in coconut oil and, and good stuff and and then put some gloves on and you'll have the softest hands ever. Now, I don't like to put too much lotion on my hands. At night when I'm doing my chapstick, I usually run my chapstick across my cuticles. <laughs> Makes it great. So you see, we've got 12 months of practicing different habits. November is menu planning. Somebody asked, what is it? November is menu planning. And 12 months of practicing these habits 
then you can start piggybacking things onto those to become routines. So as Liz put this one time, and I just thought it was brilliant. Habits, string them into routines, and then your routines become your habits. That's Fly Lady in a nutshell. Practicing these simple routines, morning, afternoon, evening, a basic weekly plan, a zone for each week, and bam, you're flying. January is keeping your sink clean and shining. It's always the first habit when you start. We always renew that habit every January. So you see, it's quite simple. You just have to do it. Follow along with us. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. You name it, we're there. Because I want to diversify as much as possible. We don't ever know when Facebook's going to go belly up. Yeah, I said it. So folks, you can do this. You really can. It's what flying's all about. It's what flying is all about. Is loving yourself through this process. And when, you're, when your home is in order, you're shining. You're wonderful. So folks, what do you got to lose? You don't have anything to lose. Try it. Try it. I'll see you at 3 o'clock and I'll talk to you about dancing. Yeah, we're going to talk about dancing. Okay, folks. See you later. Share this video. Our coupon code is FUN2021. And just let people know it's not as hard as it seems. We give you a mission every day. We tell you what to do. I'm bossy like that. I really am. I love you all. I'll see you at 3 Eastern time.